Our Eucharist this morning begins on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
how good it is to sing praises to our God. How blessed it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. And binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. And calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but he casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the heart. He covers the heavens with clouds. And prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains. And green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds. And for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the power of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him. In those who obey his gracious favor. Hallelujah. reading today is from Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For it is, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if I, if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, although I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I'm not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak so that I might win the week. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. 
And many were cured of, of their sicknesses and various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go into the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. So I was talking with a parishioner earlier this week, maybe someone in this room named Carl, maybe not. <laughs> and we were, we were laughing together about how both of us perhaps read more news than is helpful for either of us, and sometimes it can be kind of hard week after week reading the news cycle. And it got me thinking that that those of you who perhaps overread the news like us, or if you're not really a person at all that follows the news terribly much, it is hard to imagine that you are not aware that we are walking into an election time of year in our country, particularly those souls who live in New Hampshire or Iowa uh, a few weeks back where millions and millions were invested in advertising and flyers and campaigns and rallies and speakers all over the place, crisscrossing the states, getting their word out there. And friends, that election train, I believe, is on its way. It will soon be in North Carolina. If you haven't already, like I have, started getting flyers in the mail. I say all this because really no matter my opinion of the candidates, whether I agree with them or not isn't what I'm getting at today, really any of them I look at and sort of think they have some type of drive, some type of superhuman strength, because can you imagine looking at these people's schedules, what they go through constantly in front of people, constantly under the microscope, and constantly having to play that game uh, where they're trying to project a certain thing that they want people to hear, um, and, and sort of the difference between their public and private life and trying to navigate that, again, can you imagine what it's like to be these candidates and the superhuman strength? Speaking, here's a segue for you, speaking of superhuman strength, our gospel today is a story of Jesus in, in a very similar way, um, very different than political campaigns, but I mean in this way similar, Jesus' name was getting out there and he was getting more and more attention, more and more people were following him, and we'll see this all throughout um, the Gospels, but of course more scrutiny comes with that too. The more famous you get, the more you get out there, the more Jesus was under the microscope. People were watching, people were hungry, people were wanting to learn more, but then there were also people with their frustrations as well. And Jesus, obviously fueled by the Holy Spirit, this superhuman energy, I can't imagine. So our Gospel today is, is really beautiful and unique because it shows these different layers. What I was kind of getting out to political candidates, what I wish I could get, uh, maybe you do, I don't feel like I always do, is I wish that I could really know the heart, really know the person. Because if I did, I would feel so much more voting for what they say, as opposed to wondering, is that, is that just what, what, what they want me to hear? Our gospel today is different than that, in the sense that we see private life and personal life of Jesus back and forth in this narrative but you get to see the heart of both. You get to see the Jesus both in public and in private. So what happened in our gospel is he started out, of course, uh, it says at the synagogues teaching, then he came in sort of this private Jesus mode where you see this beautiful story of him with Peter's mother-in-law and a sort of private healing. Then again we shift and everybody in the city literally comes out and crowds around to hear him and he preaches and he heals and casts out demons. Then again, we have this private version of Jesus where he slipped away and prayed. And then after that, he went back out to preach to all of Galilee. So see this sort of pattern, this private, public, private, public. And through it all, you feel like you get to know the genuine Jesus. You see, I think really the gravity of the story is Peter and his mother-in-law and this healing of Jesus with this man. Now, think about it. This is Peter, the same one who the last couple of weeks we've heard the stories of Jesus saying, follow me. 
they got up, these fishermen, and followed Jesus, apparently without talking to their families at all, which we talked about is this kind of nuts. And in this sense, this feels very full circle, where he maybe for the first time is bringing Jesus back to meet his family, who he had left his whole life for, and, and that sort of full circle and healing that comes with that. But this is where we see this heart of Jesus, where he puts his hand out. It's such a tender story, isn't it? It's just a few lines, but then he lifts this woman up, is the wording in the gospel. And scholars will tell you, I'm not a scholar, but I can read what scholars have to say. And what they told, what, what, what they'll agree on is this verb used to lift up is the same verb used throughout Mark for healings of raising people from the dead. But then the important part is it's the same verb for the resurrection of Jesus. So we have this woman. We don't even know her name. We have some details. And when Mark gives us details, we pay attention. We knew she was sick. We knew who she was. We knew she was at her home. When Jesus raised her up, lifted her up, in a sense, what we're seeing is this first foreshadowing. Those of you who remember your English cast language, your first foreshadowing of what was to come, resurrection. This is the first real resurrection idea, theme, feel that we have in Mark. So we should pay attention because it's really an incredible thing. So there we are. First resurrection story, Jesus with this woman, the heart of Jesus to raise her up um, and lift her up. Then, did you catch the line right after that? She gets healed, then what does she do? Immediately, she serves. So there's something to it that perhaps is cultural, where of course, um, at the time, she would have gotten up to perhaps offer Jesus and Peter and the guests something in her home, which is a beautiful hospitality line in that. But I think we can make it a little more broad. Resurrection essentially is what happens. Jesus gave this little foreshadowing of what was to come with his healing and hope and what his resurrection means. It means renewal. It means new life. It means things are changing and things are happening. So get on board. And if that happens to you and those signs of resurrection in your life, what this beautiful story tells us is we should then be inspired to serve which is the resurrection opportunities for other people around us, right? So see the cycle. Jesus initiates this resurrection idea, this new life, this healing, this hope, which is what resurrection is, this hope in this woman. She gets up and turns around and immediately serves. And what she has been doing is maybe being a resurrection moment for the people around her by doing that too, to then inspire them to serve. And that's the sort of Christian cycle. It is so um, easy, I think, sometimes to not see things through a resurrection worldview, depending on the season you're in. Maybe it's a season where you feel empty or things are tiring, and it's hard to always look for new hope, for joy. But those ideas, of course, we have the ultimate resurrection of Jesus, but that theme, that idea is all around us. In fact, this morning at the 8 o'clock, I looked out, and this tree is already starting to bud in spring. Right there, that's an example of resurrection that can inspire us to live into that and then serve others. So that is this resurrection service idea. I look up here at our beautiful cross behind the altar, and it's not just Jesus on a cross, which some are. I love this cross because you see what Jesus is wearing. He's wearing his resurrection robes. It's that idea that even in the seasons of life where we might resonate more with the feeling of being in the valley or death, if you will, the opposite of resurrection, to know that there is always hope. And that's what the story shows us. Jesus raised this woman up, gave her the feeling of resurrection that inspired her to go out and serve. We see these resurrection ideas. I know it feels a little abstract, but you see it in the world around you. That's the hope that we have, the Christian hope. Um, my, you know, she's not here today. She got sick, which is classic preschool. She'll be just fine. But Martha <laughs> Jane, those of you who have been here often know she is a lot. She loves church. She is very present. Right now, what she's really wrestling with, and it's, it's a little funny, it started with the bobcat at the nature center who died. So that starts that conversation you have with little children about death and trying to understand it and, and trying to create... Um, uh, beautiful ways, gentle ways to explain the sort of cycle of life, death. And so one of the things that dawned on me is her name, this was just last night, she was bringing it up again, her name is Martha. Her, my wife's grandma was Martha, who essentially was that resurrection 
person in my wife's life was a second mother to her. Grandma Martha knew Martha was born for about two months, um, and then she passed away. But within that, that cycle of death and life, what it dawned on me is that's an example of resurrection, right? Not in the same way of Jesus' resurrection, but that theme of hope and new life is Grandma Martha lives through this little girl with her namesake who asks about her and prays about her every day. Those are the signs of the beauty of simple resurrection things around us from trees budding to ups and downs in your own life. We see it in our gospel with Jesus' healings, with Jesus' exorcism. All these are pointing towards new hope, new life, new things happening. So we have to look for it. And sometimes it does take work. We have to sometimes be intentional to work for those signs of resurrection. That is the Christian story at its core. Hope, new life through Jesus Christ. So there's, there's different things that we can take from this, but I think the gospel gives it to us. Did you catch what Jesus did? So this public, private, public, private. What did Jesus do after the whole city came out and he did more healings and exorcisms? He slipped away to pray. <laughs> We all need that time to be still and to pray in order to look and see the signs of resurrection, right? That's what empowers us to then be able to look for these signs of resurrection, which then is the next step. When we see those, we can't help but live out and be, it's like that movie, Pay It Forward. We can't help but then be the signs of resurrection for other people around us. That is the Christian hope. That is what Jesus' ultimate resurrection from the dead shows us is that we too are people of resurrection and hope. I know this sounds a more like an Easter sermon. Maybe that's fitting because we're about to move into Lent. But just before we do, this gospel gives us this little insight. Jesus lifted her up so she could serve. So what ways are we being lifted up by Jesus? What ways are you all lifting each other up so that we can go forth and be the hands and feet of Jesus? This gospel is full of it. And and, and sort of like I started with, with, with this feeling of it's hard to really know the genuine heart of the people you vote for sometimes and you wish you really could know when you're going to the election booth and, 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 and voting. In this sense, we see the heart of Jesus. In public and private, we see this loving theme of being present, of pointing towards hope and new life. And that's what we get in this gospel. So I, I don't really have this great takeaway other than I hope you feel it too, this energy that comes from this gospel that's just beautiful. So friends, whether you're in sort of a valley right now or you're on top of a mountain, look for those signs of resurrection. That's the Christian hope. That's what will inspire us to then serve and feel that from other people. And sometimes you need a moment to go pray just like Jesus did, to be still, to be energized, so then again you can wake up and look around and see the resurrection that is all around us. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternity God with the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was laid in man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the good Father, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
praying for all the congregations of our diocese, and today especially the seminarians and all students, faculty, and staff involved in theological education. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Reverend Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remember Joe, our president, Roy, our governor. We pray for all who govern and all who hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Remember all those in our parish prayer list. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their stress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in their heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you an everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you, and an ending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day brings with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this do we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be pleased. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. 